Thank you for that beautiful prelude music. Welcome to American Heritage School and to our pre-tour fireside. My name is Blaine Hunsaker and I am the assistant principal that gets to work with these wonderful youth and their directors. There are, uh, here before you, you have 135 youth that come from American Fork Campus, Salt Lake Campus, as well as an extended choir that has joined us from across the United States as they will go on a touring fireside. I'd like to just take just a couple of moments with a few housekeeping items for tonight. So first of all, take a moment to silence your cell phones and uh, make sure that the, the, they are in the off position so that we can enjoy the music and the spirit that will be present this evening. The entrance that you came through these doors is the only entrance in this building that exit, when you exit, is into the interior of the building. All of the rest of the exits here are to the exterior of, of the building. Uh, take a moment, please, if you would, to go to the back of your program. Over the next few days, starting on Friday, uh, June 2nd, this group of amazing youth will be uh, touring in Idaho and Oregon and Washington. If you know individuals, or family, or friends who could be touched by this message that you will hear, that you will hear tonight, please invite them to attend these fire sites. Please note that in Spokane, on the, on the last day of the tour, there are two fire sites. Yes, I said two on one day. 5.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. in that area. So, we'd also like to give a very special thank you to our director, Mr. Rob Swenson, his assistant director, Matt Thornton, as well as Will Hatch, who assists in Salt Lake, for all of their countless hours in preparing the tour and helping these youth prepare musically so they can share their talents and their testimonies, as you will feel tonight. Also, we'd be amiss without thanking two others by name, uh, that is Julie Irwin and Chandra Childs, who are the tour coordinators for this tour. It's appropriate at this time for an applause. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> On this tour, there are also 29 chaperones, and if you take a moment to look at the, the final, not the final page, but, but just a few pages in where the acknowledgements are, you can see all of those listed who have worked to put this tour together, so we'd like to thank all of them for that. As this is a fireside, we ask that you do hold your applause until the final number, after which you are welcome to applaud, which will be, I believe in Christ. And um, we are, we're going to begin um, this, this program uh, tonight before we have uh, the formal start, and we're going to give some time to the director, Mr. Bob Swenson, to also share with us a, a few things about some of the youth that have been with the choir for quite some time. And then following that, we will have our opening hymn that led by Anise Harmon, and the music is in your program. It is The Lord is My Light, hymn 89. And then our opening prayer will be offered by Mary Kay Ware, and following the uh, devotional fireside tonight, uh, Jack, Holmes, a grandfather, who will be giving the, the, the benediction. So thank you again for being here, and this is also available online uh, for your family that were not able to make it here in person tonight. So without further ado, Mr. Rob Swenson. Thank you, and thank you for being with us tonight. For many of these choir members, this uh, performance tonight represents the culmination of many years of participation in the Heritage Youth Chorus. Uh, to participate in an after-school uh, extracurricular choir that meets on Mondays after school um, weekly um, is a significant sacrifice. And the further you get into the high school years, it seems the more significant the sacrifice becomes. Uh, there are many opportunities for after-school activities, and, and we hope and we encourage our choir members to actually participate in other after-school activities like athletics and drama. But to make it all work sometimes is, is a challenge, and it requires a special kind of student that's able to balance many different things in their lives. Uh, we also know that these students come and participate in this choir uh, not because they get any, uh, necessarily any, um, uh, benefit exclusively to themselves, but, but they see this, as I do, as a service organization. And, uh, and the hours that they put in practicing at home and practicing 
as an ensemble are all focused on service and on giving and sharing the message uh, that we are hoping to share with our audiences. And so with that uh, introduction, we, we just want to recognize the graduating seniors. These are seniors who have participated in the regular uh, choir, either in American Fork or Salt Lake, for a full year or more, some of them um, many more years than that. I'm curious, has anybody, do we have any seniors that have been in the choir for five years? A couple, okay, we've got three, three or four, and I know that there's, there's some that have done um, three, four, or five years. Um, so go ahead and stand as I call your name. Benjamin Anderson, Serenity Bailey, Anna Lee Buck, Ollie Bjor, Vincent Christiansen, Ethan Cox, Emily Curzon, Sarah Gonquiag, Brittany Gilmore, Shirley Graham, Harvest Hale, Rachel Hancock, Eric Heater, Emma Holmes, Maya Holyoke, Logan Hunsaker, Ella Larson, Spencer Larson, Hannah Lau, Kelsey McLean, I'm, I'm losing a big group this year, uh, Ryan Mitchell, Sabrina Monson, Taylor Muelstein, Zion Ong, Noel Pace, Jace Pulley, Julie Riboli, Emma Rollins, Kelly Smith, Rachel Stafford, Eden Waite, and Joseph Wayland. Will you help me thank these singers for all that they've done? For each of these seniors, we, we, we uh, get a little hymn book for them that has their name engraved on the front, and we'll pass these around and underline some of our favorite lines of text from the, the music that we've sung over the years and, and uh, well wishes, and we'll, we'll give that to each one of them. I also want to recognize that we have uh, several extended choir members. Since we started the extended choir program, we've had, yeah, you can go ahead and sit down for a minute. Since we've started the extended choir member uh, program, we've had several that have come back year after year, some of them two or three years in a row. And these ex members are also seniors and will be uh, singing their last year of the choir. Naomi Bergeson, Samantha Davis, Sarah Rebo, and Ina Roberson. Um, and then last but not least, go ahead and stand. Yeah, you, you five, four. And then finally, in, in addition to these four, we have one that's also a senior. He joined us a little late in the game. He was he was uh, he came a little little later in the year, but we just liked him so much we decided to keep him. It's like the puppy that shows up at your doorstep, and we just can't we just couldn't say. He's such a great young man and such a fantastic singer. But uh, Ryan Boris also is with us and he's graduating this year. So we hope you enjoy the, the fireside tonight. Thank you again for being here, and we hope that you enjoy um, I Can Do All Things Through Christ.
are so grateful to be gathered here this evening to hear the beautiful music and messages that this choir has prepared. And we ask you at this time a special blessing on them, that they may perform tonight and on their tour with power, with the gift of the Holy Ghost, to bear witness of the truthfulness of the messages that they are singing and speaking about. We love thee and we're grateful for the opportunities for these youth and we're grateful for them for their hard work and preparation to make this a great opportunity to share the gospel and to share their light and love with others. And we ask that the audience tonight and throughout their shore will be receptive to the message that they will feel in their hearts the truthfulness of the doctrines taught and we ask for these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.
love to sing the words, Praise to the Lord. O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath come now with praises before him. This beloved hymn text was written in 1680 by the German priest Joachim Neander. 200 years later, it was translated into English by the hymn writer Catherine Winkworth. Both versions were based on psalms written centuries before Christ, but which foretold his role as our shelterer and our sustainer. The testimonies and experiences we will share in tonight's program are from real people, including some of us, who have found hope by coming to Christ and are experiencing the power of His atonement. We hope that as we sing and testify, you will recognize the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost, feel God's love for you, and learn to trust in the Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the most fervent and powerful testimonies of Christ was given by the Apostle Paul, who said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That statement, found in Philippians 4.13, is the theme of our program tonight. Paul was born Saul of Tarsus. In Tarsus, he enjoyed both Roman citizenship and a first-class Jewish education. He had a persuasive tongue and rose to a position of power. In his own words, he used his power to persecute Christians beyond measure. Then, on the road to Damascus, while escorting a group of Christians to judgment, he was overcome by a heavenly vision of the resurrected Christ. His conversion was swift and profound. He changed his name to Paul and spent his remaining years bearing witness to the Son of God and trying to rebuild what he had torn down. During his 30-year ministry, he was stoned, beaten, and imprisoned. He knew the shame of sin, the agony of persecution, and the sting of injustice. Drawing from his personal experiences he, and from his writings from within the prison walls, he boldly said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me.
The knowledge that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, helped me last year when I needed a couple of eye surgeries. I had to travel to Canada for the surgeries. I was nervous and scared. I spent a lot of time praying and asking for help. The night before my mom and I flew to Canada, my dad gave me a priesthood blessing. Then, just before going under anesthesia, I said a final prayer. When I woke up, I felt calm and peaceful. I was grateful for all those who had fasted and prayed in my behalf. Through Heavenly Father's care, I found the courage to face a difficult ordeal. God cares for all of us in personal and tender ways. But do you ever wonder how he can care for all of us all at once? Earlier this year, I went on a canyoneering trip in southern Utah with some of my friends. It was intense, and I was exhausted by the end of it all. But the one thing that never ceased to amaze me was the infinite beauty all around me. The bright blue skies were full of the fluffiest clouds I have ever seen, with the beautiful red rocks and cliffs up against the majestic purple snowy mountains in the distance, with colorful wildflowers and sagebrush all around us. I kept stopping to look at the landscape and thinking about the wonderful, how wonderful this earth is, and that God created all of this for us, and he even created all the planets and galaxies for us to explore. I am always blown away by all of the amazing um, creations God has made for us. The prophet Enoch felt the same way when he said, were it possible that man could number the particles of the earth, Yea, millions of Earths like this, it would not be a beginning to the number of thy creations, and yet thou art there, and thou art just, thou art merciful and kind forever. As inspiring as the beauty and majesty of Earth and space is, I have felt equally inspired by some of God's other gifts. Uh, simple yet entirely irrational things like love, laughter, music, and beauty, just to name a few, provide evidence of a God of infinite mercy and kindness. He loves us, each of us, in ways that we cannot fully comprehend. We might wonder why God has surrounded us with so many numbers. The stars in the heavens, the leaves on the trees, the sands on the beaches, the billions of children who have walked this earth. Perhaps it is because God is demonstrating that since he can handle all of these things, he can easily handle the relatively small details of our lives. Perhaps this is one of his love languages, one of the many ways that he shows us that he loves us. All of God's creations remind us of the deep love he has for each of his children.
I struggle with making decisions. The freedom to choose is marvelous, but it's also terrifying. It's easy to wonder if we're messing up, and the truth is, we probably are. But the good news is that when we tap into the power of Christ, our biggest blunders can be turned into our best blessings. I struggle with perfectionism, which makes it hard to let go of mistakes. Once I decided to make up for my mistakes by doing good works, after a year of doing all I could do, I realized I was still miserable and decided to take it to God. I knelt down and asked him to forgive my sin. In that moment, I felt an overwhelming prompting to the extent that he had long since forgiven me, but that I needed to forgive myself. I struggle with being super hard on myself. Too often, I let my mistakes change how I feel about who I am as a person. But recently, I began to see the atonement in a new light. I began to see how Jesus Christ makes it possible for us not only to repent, but to see ourselves through his love and mercy. When we see ourselves as the Savior sees us, we treat ourselves with compassion rather than condemnation. How does Christ help us in our struggles? Ryan Sharp, a professor of ancient scripture, said that the words, I can do all things through Christ, have inspired countless athletes, musicians, and others in their efforts to succeed. You may have seen the scripture on basketball shoes, baseball gloves, guitars, and study notes for a final exam. Perhaps they think faith in Christ is a guarantee they will never lose or fail. However, this may not be what the Apostle Paul meant. When Paul wrote this phrase to the saints in Philippi, he was not thriving in his personal life. We become aware of his highs and lows when we read the verses after that. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Although Paul had known success, he had also known failure. He knew what it was like when life was going well, but he also knew the pains of disappointment, loneliness, and desperate Through it all, he wrote, I can do all things through Christ, who strengtheneth me.
One day, I came into choir practice having had a really bad day. We started singing How Gentle God's Commands, and I thought about the phrase, Why should this anxious load press down your weary mind? I remember how Christ said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. He didn't mean he is the yoke. He is not the burden on our shoulders. What he meant is that he is in the yoke with us, helping us bear our load. When I realized this, it felt as if the burdens had been lifted from my shoulders. Seeing this choir and this wonderful opportunity to be blessed here has given me many blessings and much guidance. The light that I've experienced in my life through these experiences and through the ability to pray daily and to do scripture study, as well as singing this choir, have really lived my way. I testify that the experiences and the blessings that he gives us are what can relieve our burdens. And just as this next hymn says, we can come to him. We can lay our burdens at his feet. Oh, oh, oh. 
Proverbs 2.7 is my power scripture. I use it in both good times and in bad times. It brings me comfort and hope. It reads, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to those that walk uprightly. A buckler is a shield a warrior uses in battle. Jesus is my protection and my shield against the adversary. When I follow him, he gives me the strength and power I need to prevail. If anyone knew about battling the adversary, it was Paul. When he went to Jerusalem, an angry mob dragged him from the temple, placed him in chains, and threatened his life. Because he was a Roman citizen, he was transported to Rome for trial. His escort included 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearsmen. He waited two years in jail before being brought to trial. While he waited, he wrote letters to the congregations he had taught. His advice to the Ephesians? Put on the whole armor of God, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. My teacher shut it down immediately, but we were all deeply disturbed. The next day, when I came upon this verse, it overwhelmed me with a feeling of peace. It reads, believe in God, believe that he is, and that he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that he has all wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that man doth not comprehend all the things which the Lord can comprehend. I don't understand how or why bad things happen in this world but I know God is in control. He who created all things has all wisdom and all power. Christ, who descended below all, understands my anxieties and continues to strengthen me. I know I can overcome anything through Christ because he overcame everything.
Every storm tossed sea, I can feel my Savior so close to me. He leads me forward through paths unknown. And when my strength is gone, He heals my weary soul and shows me who I could be. He stays with me. Apostle Paul was one of the greatest witnesses of Christ. He loved the Savior, and from the instant he had his vision on the road to Damascus, he spent his life serving him. He asked, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? I think it's important to remember that Paul had experienced all of these things. 2,000 years later, his answer still rings in our ears. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor present things, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of our God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In 1832, just two years after translating and publishing the Book of Mormon, the prophet Joseph Smith had a similar vision of the risen Lord. He wrote of his experience in the Doctrine and Covenants where he said, This is the testimony, last of all, which we give of him, that he lives. For we saw him even on the right hand of God, and we heard the voice-bearing record that he is the only begotten of the Father. 
And this is the gospel, the glad tidings, which the voice out of the heavens will record unto us, that he came into the world, even Jesus, to be crucified for the world, and to bear the sins of the world, and to sanctify the world, and to cleanse it from all unrighteousness, that through him all might be saved. In our day, President Russell M. Nelson, the 17th and current president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, continues to testify of Christ. He said, Whatever questions or problems you have, the answer is always found in the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Learn more about his atonement, his love, his mercy, his doctrine, and his restored gospel of healing and progression. Turn to him, follow him.
Our Father in heaven, we're very, very thankful to be able to be here this evening with the privilege of hearing this beautiful music, the messages that we've heard. We're thankful for the great talent that we see. We're thankful for these young people and the effort that they make and the lives that they live. And we pray that that will be with all those involved in this choir tour. The decisions will be made under an inspiration and that safety will prevail and they will be able to arrive home safely. We're thankful for our blessings and we pray that we too can arrive home safely this evening. We're thankful for the gospel in our lives. This we say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.